Doc Talk is brought to you by Merck Animal Health, the science of healthier animals. Hey folks, welcome to Doc Talk. Glad that you joined us today. We're gonna have a great show. Dr. Brad White from the Department of Clinical Sciences here at the College of Veterinary Medicine at Kansas State University is joining us. We're gonna talk about diagnosing and finding cattle that are sick with bovine respiratory disease. Thanks for joining us and stay tuned after this message. As dependable as the sunrise, in dairy parlors, open pastures, on ranches and feed yards across America, a place where reputation is more than a name, where the science of healthier animals is a way of life. It's the responsibility that drives who we are and what we do. Every decision, every day. It's your livelihood and our responsibility. Closed caption brought to you by AgriLabs, the perfect pairing of performance and value. you by the new hired hand portable cow sprayer for more information visit cowsprayer.com brad welcome to the show thanks dan folks this is dr brad white and he's joining us today we're tickled to death to have him here he's somebody that not just has a presence here in the state of kansas but has a presence nationally and internationally when it comes to bovine respiratory disease and some of the things and that uh, we see in the feedlots, and, and he's an associate professor in the Department of Clinical Sciences, and man, you do a lot of research, don't you? Do quite a bit of research, yeah. a lot with respiratory disease. Yeah, well, it's a lot of good work, and, and we're very thankful you'd take time to, to spend time with us today here on the show. Thank you. So, talk a little bit about some of the background of bovine respiratory disease and, and some of the things that that you see or, or things that we're dealing with when it comes to bovine respiratory disease in the industry? Uh, that's a, a good question. So bovine respiratory disease is a big problem in the industry, especially after we wean calves. And it's one of the one of the diseases that we have a lot of trouble with because just like people get pneumonia when cattle get bovine respiratory disease, they, they have problems, can have problems breathing, but it's hard to diagnose because their instinct is to hide that illness because they're a herd animal. So they don't want to be picked out from the herd but would rather hide the symptoms, so it's hard to diagnose. Kind of that predator prey uh, defense mechanism. Don't show your weakness, and then you aren't the one that's preyed upon. Exactly, exactly. They don't want to get separated from the herd. So some of the signs that we see, they don't eat as much, so they may not go to feed as often. They may act depressed, but all of those are uh, subjective signs. So when we try to find those calves, it's very hard to pick them out when we're we're managing them as a group. Okay, so when we do see some of the clinical signs that you, you mentioned going off feed, but what are some other clinical signs of calves suffering from respiratory disease? Yeah, so we see going off feed, they may be depressed, they may be separated or isolated from the group, so back to they want to be a part of that herd, but they can't maintain because they're ill. They may spend a little more time off by themselves and laying down, so not doing the normal activities that calves do. Really, we have to understand what normal calves look like, and they have variation in our behavior just like we do. They have variation in how they respond to illness. Yep. So when we start to think about, you know, some of the, the opportunities out there, obviously, if, we, if, we, if they're hiding their symptoms, there must be some, some opportunity there to, to improve upon finding them. One of, the, one of the real challenges is if we don't diagnose them accurately, then we run the risk of if we don't find a sick calf and he's sick, we can't apply a treatment effectively. So we can't make him better. And the longer he's sick before we treat him, the more trouble we have with those calves. They don't respond as well to treatment. On the flip side of the coin, if there are calves that are out there that are healthy and we think they're sick, then we may be inadvertently treating them, which takes time and also some other resources to, to go ahead and treat them. So finding those sick calves accurately is really important. Right now, and we've actually done some research looking at how accurate we are, and it was one of the things that was humbling to me as we compared 
what does the calf look like, and then we look at their lungs, very different story sometimes because they don't always tell us the full story by their behavior and what we see because we see such a short period of time. Even in our research projects where we have time to spend a few minutes looking at each calf, you still don't, aren't able to pick up what they're doing 24 hours a day. So the struggle is how do, we, how do we monitor and really find them more accurately. Cool. We're going to take a break. When we come back, there will be more with Dr. Brad White on bovine respiratory disease. Thanks for watching. This Meet the Future Veterinarian is brought to you by Zuprivo. Choose confidence. Choose Zuprivo for BRD treatment. Julia Herman took a winding path to become a veterinarian with inspiration as a child from National Geographic books, then with a bachelor's in zoology and a master's in epidemiology. After graduation from Colorado State's College of Veterinary Medicine, Julia plans on finding a position that combines livestock and wildlife medicine, epidemiology, research, and public health. Some call it a come from behind victory, an unlikely win, a reversal of fortune, snatching victory from the jaws of defeat. This is our moment, our victory dance, because we choose confidence. We choose Zuprivo for BRD treatment. Ask your veterinarian to prescribe Zuprivo. Zuprivo is a fast acting, long lasting BRD treatment that you can count on to get the job done. Choose confidence. Choose Zuprivo for Merck Animal Health. No matter where, no matter why, the Veterinary Health Center at Kansas State University is committed to providing quality patient care to animals and exceptional customer service to their owners. From routine checkups to emergency and specialty care, our world-renowned specialists and experienced professionals are here to discover, to teach, and to heal. Let us know. How can I help? How can we help? Healthy cows start with the new Hired Hand Automatic Livestock Sprayer. Rancher invented to provide an efficient alternative to pour on and injectable parasite management systems. The portable design allows cattle to treat themselves head to hoof. Strategic device placement with pass-through activation technology takes the stress out of parasite treatment for cattle and the rancher. Get the new Hired Hand for yourself or become a distributor. Visit cowsprayer.com. The new Hired Hand makes healthy cows easy. This segment is brought to you by Norbrook Laboratories, manufacturers of Enriflox 100, the newest addition to your arsenal for treating bovine and swine respiratory disease. Folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson. I'm here with Dr. Brad White, who's a friend and colleague here at Kansas State University's College of Veterinary Medicine, talking about bovine respiratory disease diagnosis in, in cattle. And, you know, as, as we left, you're kind of discussing, you know, that the we're, we're picking out the wrong animals. Yep. And, I, and it is, that is one of the hardest jobs out there. So even when we try to teach students, that's one of the hardest things to teach. And even producers that have been watching cattle day after day throughout their careers, it's one of the most difficult things to find a sick animal because they don't want to be found. They don't know that we're trying to help them. So when we've looked at studies related to accuracy, we see that even when a person is trying to find those sick calves, there's a percentage of the time that we miss, that we can't find them right. early in the process, or we call them sick, they're not truly sick. So we're looking at ways to try to improve that, make it a little bit better. There's a lot of times we're pulling ugly, not yeah. sick. That's yeah. exactly right. Yeah. That's exactly right. So. They, may be, they may be ugly, they may just be off feed, they may have some other condition. Hair coat, something yep. that you just, you just something's not right with that animal, but it's not BRD. Exactly right, exactly right. But when we only have a snapshot in time to look at them, so the average pen rider, if he's riding enough pins, only has about four seconds per calf each evaluation period. So in that four second period, it's very, very difficult to see what has that calf been doing. Yeah, and the amount of animals that they look at. I mean, yep. it, you know, it's a, if you're looking at 4,000, if you try to look at 4,000 anything in a day, hey. let alone exactly every four right. seconds. Exactly right, it's, exactly it's right. Amazing. And so it's a very, very difficult job. Yeah, so you, you all have done some work and looked at some different opportunities some some rectal temp and and blood samples and and try to fine tune to determine which animals sick and when when they are sick exactly one one of the common uses is we'll see we'll take a rectal temperature so we'll find a calf in the pen we think he might be sick we take him to the chute we take his rectal temperature and normal temperature on a calf is about 101 and a half but on in warm days 
it would be much higher than that, and right. it can be lower on cooler days. But a lot of times that 101 and a half, we may say there's a cutoff at which point he's sick, and then we decide to treat him. The problem is when we go back and look at some of the large data sets that we have access to through feed yards, that it's not very predictive if they're 103 or 104 or even up to 105 of what the case outcome is going to be, which is what we care about. We want to know, should I treat this calf or not? As you get to really high temperatures, then we have a better idea that they're sick, but our case outcomes aren't as good. So we want to find them earlier in that process. So rectal temp is not going to solve just our diagnosis problem, plus we only apply it to the calves we pull out of the pen. Yeah, and, and the environmental uh, change and its effect on, on rectal temp, we've seen it in dairy cows, seen it in beef calves, you know, it, it can be all over the board. Absolutely, it's up and down, and we've done some studies in the summertime where we see rectal temp, it just varies a lot throughout the day, and then really depending on the night before, how much cooling time did we right. have, what was the low temperature. And then as far as, you know, blood samples or, or following those calves out, what, what have y'all learned or observed? In we've, the we've tried to test for several things. So we've looked from a research standpoint, is there something that would really augment what we currently do? How do we get better and what samples could we take? And for the most part, most of those blood samples have not been very predictive of the true health status of the calf, which is disappointing, but not surprising because we say BRD, and unlike a, a disease with a single pathogen, it's a syndrome, so it's not surprising that sometimes their blood values look like this or like this. So the, the simple answer is we don't have a silver bullet which help us diagnose BRD. One of the things we found in those trials that was very interesting were some of the behavioral changes among those calves as it related to BRD. Cool. Well, let's pick up on the behavior after these messages. You're watching Doc Talk. Thanks for joining us. The BQA Tip of the Day, sponsored by Beringer Engelheim Vet Medica Inc. Hello folks, this is Dr. Nels Lindbergh with Animal Medical Center and Production Animal Consultation out of Great Bend, Kansas. Today's BQA Tip of the Day, we're going to talk about lung scoring cattle and the newest tool we have available to us today to use to help us better identify and identify the severity of respiratory disease in cattle is a stethoscope. For the last 50 years, the only two ways we've pulled and treated sick cattle is by visual observation as well as then once they're in the chute is using a thermometer to see what their temperature was. Up until a few years ago, we have never had a tool such as this to give us another tool to our toolbox to help us better identify the animal and the severity of the, the disease that they may have. It's very easy, works very well. You place the stethoscope right here, it records the lung sound, kicks it across to the computer, kicks out a lung score, as you can see up here, and then we can use that as part of our decision-making process and antibiotic selection for these sick animals. It's a great resource. It's the best thing we've had since a thermometer. Let's put it to use. Say this is a calf that's been run through the chute a few too many times. Going through the chute stresses cattle, causing them not to eat like they should. Luckily, Pyramid 5 plus Presponse SQ provides proven protection against key respiratory diseases in a single shot, with just one trip through the chute. Talk to your veterinarian about Pyramid 5 plus Presponse SQ, and soon your calves will relax and eat like a whole different animal. Broadband has become as important to us as highways. That is why Doc Talk is teaming up with NTCA, the Rural Broadband Association, and rural broadband companies like Blue Valley Telecommunications in fighting for quality broadband access through the program Smart Rural Communities. I don't think we have any idea what's coming in the future. I couldn't have imagined five years ago what we're doing today. So in two years, I would guess there's things we can't imagine that we're going to be doing. To learn more, visit ntca.org forward slash smart or bluevalley.net. Hello friends, I'm Ernie Rodina. And I'm Don Dawson with the Better Horses Radio Show. For over nine years, we've been bringing the Better Horses Radio Show to markets all across the Midwest. We talk about God, lots about horses. We talk about cows, we talk about horse health, we talk to top trainers, and we even talk about Roy Rogers. We're having a blast with Better Horses Radio Show and would love to take it to a market near you. So visit our website at betterhorsesradio.com and let us or your local radio station know you'd like to hear it in your area. The Better Horses Radio Show is unbelievable. unbelievable. True Test Group, 
weighing systems, electronic identification, EID, electric fencing, and dairy automation systems help farmers and ranchers around the world manage the performance of their livestock for ultimate profitability. Folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Brad White, and we're talking about bovine respiratory disease. And Brad, you kind of walked us through, um, you know, getting to, through through the clinical signs, inability to find sick cattle, some of the things, tools that we've used to augment what we're already doing, whether it's taking a rectal temp or looking at some blood samples, and, and really we're not improving our our ability to surveil these cattle or, or find them or even get a better treatment. So you've been looking now at some of the things with behavior, correct? A absolutely. So, and so one of the things that we found is cattle behavior, just like us when we're sick, will show that behavior in different ways. So we'll behave different than when we're feeling normal. So as one of the early things that we did, we looked at activity. So cattle that are sick, as you would expect, they're less active. So they'll walk around less, they'll spend more time lying down, which was interesting for us as we discovered that you could really pick out which cattle were sick and which cattle weren't. It also changes their eating and drinking behavior, which is what we're looking for when we visually observe cattle to try to find illness. Right. The difference is when we visually observe cattle, we've got a snapshot. We go out, we look, this is the point in time, I'm here in the pen looking at the cattle. When we monitor behavior with a remote system as we've been doing, we monitor it 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So now instead of a snapshot, we've got the movie. So we can tell exactly what they're doing and we don't have them modifying their behavior with the presence of a person in the pen. You're getting past the sound bite. You're getting the whole story. Exactly right, exactly right. We get the whole story so we get a lot of data and as we sift through, we start to uncover some things that, that we didn't know before and they change a little bit of our paradigm assumptions. For example, uh, sick calves, and as we started out talking our typical, we say look for the calf that's kind of off by himself. That's right. absolutely true. We see that later in the disease process. Early oh. in the disease process, what we see is they spend more time in a group. The problem is, without remote monitoring, we never see that because it's very hard to say, go look for the calf that's spending more time with other calves. And unless yeah. you're watching the movie, you don't get to see that. So that's one of the things that we've uncovered that allows us to really change how we can find those sick calves. There's probably a ton of things that you could use this technology for, whether it's when a cow's going to calve or... Absolutely. You know, yep. or Those are I was just sitting here thinking, you know, for opportunities, it's, it's got to be endless. Yep. So when they're going to calve, a respiratory disease is where we start because it's the, the biggest issue that we face in weaned right. beef calves, but there are lots of other syndromes even for feedlot cattle or cow-calf or some of the other opportunities there. So the, 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 uh, just for the people out there that are, that are maybe not familiar with this technology, it's a, what is the name? It's ready. So we're using, we're using remote early disease identification okay. is the system. And so through, through our company, Precision Animal Solutions, we're coming out with that remote early disease identification, or ready for short, is what we're doing. Awesome. Is it available on the market today? Is it we're hoping to come to market in the next few months, so it'll awesome. be out soon. Awesome. Well, I think as we head into the fall and, and, and different seasons of receiving calves, this is going to be really uh, important to be able to, to touch on the behaviors. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we'll do a wrap-up with you and, and talk a little bit about, about Ready and, and how it fits. But folks, Dr. Brad White, we're lucky to have him on the show. Thank you for watching Doc Talk. More after these messages. The BQA Tip of the Day, sponsored by Beringer Engelheim Vet Medica Inc. Hello folks, this is Dr. Nels Lindberg with Animal Medical Center and Production Animal Consultation out of Great Bend, Kansas. Today's BQA Tip of the Day, we're going to talk about bunk space management as well as pen densities. In this sort of scenario, one size doesn't fit all and we must always remember that. One of the most critical time frames of pen density and bunk space management is when we're starting high risk cattle. We want to give those cattle as much room as we can. The general rule of thumb I use is if we're starting high risk cattle, every animal must be able to come to the bunk at the same time. If you're looking at those cattle and feeding them in the morning and not every single high risk animal can come to the bunk at the same time, we need more bunk space. May not necessarily do anything positive for the economics initially, but on the back end in terms of economics, it will pay on the front end to give them 18 inches of bunk space. We want to give them that, t that bunk space to reduce stress, let them get good feed intake, also give them a good amount of space in the pen. 
That's our tip for today. Thank you. This hog is Hanover hoof for meal made from U.S. soybeans. Now, one hog isn't that impressive, but suppose we add another, and another, and another. Before long, you've got billions of hungry customers around the world all clamoring for the same thing. Our soybeans. Learn more about the billion-dollar appetite of animal agriculture at beyondtheelevator.com. Brought to you by America's Soybean Farmers and their checkoff. Working your cattle just got easier. Introducing the new Vet Gun delivery system, a new way to apply topical insecticides to your cattle. The Vet Gun lets you remotely treat cattle with effective parasite control, so you can do it just walking among the herd. It's that simple. The proven topical insecticide AML Vet Cap is used with the Vet Gun. It works fast to control horn flies and lice while minimizing stress on your cattle. Fast, easy, effective. Vet Gun. Check with your animal health supplier for availability. No matter where, no matter why, the Veterinary Health Center at Kansas State University is committed to providing quality patient care to animals and exceptional customer service to their owners. From routine checkups to emergency and specialty care, our world-renowned specialists and experienced professionals are here to discover, to teach, and to heal. Let us know. How can I help? How can we help? Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Valley Vet Supply. This segment is brought to you by the Beef Quality Assurance Program and the Kansas Beef Council. Improving animal care and beef safety for more than 20 years. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Brad White, who's an associate professor in the Department of Clinical Sciences at the College of Veterinary Medicine at Kansas State University. We're talking about some great technology that he's been a part of developing and, and, and bringing out is, is the Ready system and the remote early disease, disease identification. The identification system. And, and let's talk a little bit about, you've done some comparisons already. Yep. And yep. it's pretty cool. Yeah, so we've seen some really interesting things when we compare it to a person. So we've taken cattle and monitored them with both the person and the system. What we see is the system, as you might expect, because it's monitoring behavior 24 hours a day, seven days a week, it's finding those calves earlier. So we see that we'll find them on average 18 hours earlier, but a lot of times we're three, four, five days before the, before the person does because those behavior changes are subtle. Just like we talked about spending more time in the group, we pick up on that. So what we expect, if we can find those calves early, early treatment, better case outcome yep. is, is what we're looking for. So we've seen that we can accurately find those calves and we get better case outcomes. So in a recent trial that we did, we compared, there were a few pins and we compared 600 head monitored with the ready system to 600 head monitored with a, a person. Yeah, At the end of the study, uh, we had 10 calves that ended up being treated and died in the ready pen and 19 calves that ended up dying in the person pen. So we had the exact same number of pulls or sick cattle, but the death loss was different. Our case outcomes were different. We found them at a different time, on average about a week earlier. And when we have some of the things that, you know, associated with antibiotic resistance and decreasing antibiotic usage, you've also done some pretty unique work on replacing metaphylaxis or mass treatment on arrival. Yeah, so when we look at one of the common tools, if, if you were receiving a, a group of calves that were at high risk for bovine respiratory disease, you would likely treat them with an antimicrobial, give every one of them antimicrobial or metaphylaxis at arrival because we don't know which ones are sick and which ones aren't. And that has been a technology that has been shown very effectively to work very well at reducing the number right. of sick calves, cut them by half. So what we thought was, we thought we'll try against the conventional standard, metaphylaxis compared to ready, and no metaphylaxis. What we found was we ended up with about the same number of pulls, no difference in the number of sick calves, no difference in the number of dead calves, but we used one less dose of antibiotics. So we were able to save that initial dose because of our accurate diagnosis. Made a difference, again, good case outcome, finding them earlier. Yeah, decrease the, not, not only on the, the the, the problems that we have societally with antibiotic use and antibiotic resistance, but the cost of production decrease in those cattle. Absolutely, and it, and it changes our labor. So we're, we don't uh, replace a pen rider, but it's a good system to augment and make the best pen riders better. 
it gives them something else to go on, another tool in their toolbox that they can rely on to help do their job even better as they go through. Because it's w one of the toughest jobs in the field is finding those uh, sick calves. Yep, and when the snow's blowing down the back of your neck and you're out there working, I really appreciate you being on the show. Great technology, keep up the great work and we want to have you back. Thanks, Dan. Thank Appreciate you. it. And thank you for watching Doc Talk. Remember, always work with your local veterinarian. And if you want to know more about what Dr. White and I do here at Kansas State, you can find us on the web at www.vet.ksu.edu. Thanks for watching Doc Talk today. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson, and I'll see you down the road. Closed caption brought to you by AgriLabs, the perfect pairing of performance and value. For more information about this program or previous programs, go to DocTalkTV.com. Doc Talk was brought to you by Merck Animal Health, the science of healthier animals.